Hi guys, welcome to Learn with W3 Schools and my name is Dr. Zishan. Today we're going to start with JavaScript JSON's tutorial. So let's just cover JSON. What is JSON in this short and very quick tutorial and we're going to cover all basic aspects of JSON. Let's begin. So I'm going to use W3 Schools website as a reference. A quick disclaimer, this is not an official W3 Schools website tutorial or nor is being sponsored by them. I just love to use this website plus it allows me to share the reference materials that I'm covering so that students who want to learn can also access this website. Okay, so let's begin JavaScript. Now, it's the JavaScript JSON is a format for storing and transporting data. By that we mean that JSON is basically known as JavaScript object mutation. It allows us to store the data and allows us to transport the data to and from the server and or any other means. Okay? So JSON is a lightweight and data interchange format. That's the whole major purpose of it. It is a data interchange format. It allows us to store and transport data. So JSON entire purpose is to be able to store the data and transfer it and that's the whole thing is that's why we call it it's an interchange format it isn't technically language independent so you you can you can use json in any way you want with any language you want you can use json with python java c sharp c plus plus or any other language for that matter okay <clears throat> It doesn't specifically have to be used only with JavaScript. You can use it with anything you want. It is a self-describing and easy to understand. That's the beauty of JSON. It's quite self-describing and easy to use. And you can use it for a very easy and short purpose to transfer and store data. Okay? So JSON syntax is derived from JavaScript object notation syntax. So that's why we you call it JavaScript object notation because it primarily uses JavaScript syntax. But JSON format is text only. So it's a text only meaning that it can be used by any other language okay it just uses the javascript notation in a text only format it is not purely dependent on javascript to be used it just uses its basic syntax so for code for reading and generating json data can be written in any programming language like i said okay so this is json example let's see how it works the json example basically defines an employee object in this case this ob and then it uses three array types so this is a typical syntax of a json we start a block and we define an object called employee colon and then the data of the employee which is encapsulated inside the square brackets so these square brackets indicate that hey this is the data this is an object in some inverted quotations the colon identifies object and data relation okay so now within the data we have what we call our basic information which is again a key and a value pair so the data inside object notation is saved in a key and value pair meaning the data we save goes in a key and a value combination so we have a key and a value combination the, it, the way it works is the first thing we write is a key value and the data is actually identified based on the key okay colon indicates that hey the it, it contains a value which again is going to be this one this is a typical example of how java notation is used okay the java format evaluates to java objects in other words json formats is synthetically identical to the code creating javascript object so in terms of syntax wise java json format is identical to what how we write javascript objects that's why I said it uses javascript format or syntax of javascript but it is not based purely on javascript or dependent purely on javascript it just uses the syntax makes things look easy to work with or especially when you're working on the web so because of the similarity javascript programs can easily convert json data into its na native javascript objects how we define them in terms of syntax the basic rules goes that the data is a name and value pair just like we mentioned here we have a name and a value pair we have a name and a value pair so this becomes data on a first row on the second row we have it again this name and a value pair we have a same name we value pair okay the data is separated by the comma so you notice the commas are always there these commas indicate that this is first data this is the second data and so on and so forth the curly brackets hold the objects so these curly brackets as a whole hold the objects the curly brackets hold hold the object square brackets hold the array symbol so this square brackets basically indicate that we have an array inside it each array element is there so this whole object becomes an array element separated by a comma again another array element separated by a comma another array element okay and the, because this is the last there is no comma at last follows the same array rules the so json data a name and value pair what do we mean by that it means that the J data is written in a name and value pairs just like javascript object properties a name and value pair consists of something called a field name colon and a value again both are written in double quotation marks because usually they behave as a string 
Okay. So this is again one string, which is basically a name. And based on this name, the value. So what happens is that this value actually is stored with reference to this name. So in order to access this value, we need this first name value. Okay. So this first name basically becomes the key or the name and the value is there. So JSON names require double quotations. JavaScript names do not. So that's again one distinction that we can put inside the JSON form. If you are using JSON, basically meaning that, hey, JSON would require a double quotation marks, whereas for JavaScript, we do not need to use that. How do we access JSON objects? Well, in order to use JSON objects, uh, we use the curly brackets. Okay, so these curly brackets indicate that we are writing JSON objects. Just like JavaScript, objects can have a multiple name and value pairs. So we have one name and value pair, comma separated, second value name and pair inside a curly brackets. This becomes the whole Java, Java JSON uh, object. JSON is usually in form of arrays so that we can have multiple objects associated with one main object. So JSON arrays are written inside these curly brackets. Okay. So, uh, so sorry, square brackets. So JSON arrays we write inside the square brackets. So just like in JavaScript, an array can contain objects. So JavaScript allows that. That's why we are able to use multiple objects using the same JavaScript notation or JavaScript syntax. So now it means that, hey, I've created an array. This is first index. This is, uh, again, this is first element inside an array. This is a second element inside an array. This is a third element inside an array, each separated by a comma. As an element, it can be an object. As an element, it can be an object or a single value. Because we are using JavaScript array notations, we are able to use the object notation. Okay. So in the above example above, the employee is an, actually an array. So employee basically becomes an array. It contains three objects, object one, object two, object three. Each object records a person's first name and last name. The one thing we always try to follow is that when we write a key value, we write the same key value for all the objects. That's why that's one way of easily identifying each object well, key and value web property. So we have a first name as a key or a name. It becomes easy, first name, first name, to identify that, hey, what's the first name at the zero index? What's the first name at second index? Or we can easily identify first name and then get the value based on the relevant index number they are residing on. Okay. Same goes with the last name, last name, last name. So you will note that all the key value are actually same and the value itself, the data itself is actually changing. So converting a JSON to a text string, how do we convert a JSON to a JavaScript object notation? Since this JSON is written in a JavaScript object notation, to convert it into a JavaScript is quite easy and simple. Okay. So what we do is a common use of JSON is to read the data from web server. Like I said, uh, it's basically able to save the data. We can then transfer this data into uh, any server or using any language. And that's the major thing. And then read the data from the server as well. Okay. So for simplicity, this can demonstrate using a string as an input. So we can use this as a string. Uh, let's just create a JavaScript containing. So this is creating let text. Basically, we're creating a simple string. And we are writing within single quotation marks uh, this whole string. We are writing using the single quotations because inside it, we are using double quotations. Okay. So if they follow the same uh, single double quotation rule in JavaScript. Now, here what we're doing is we're just creating a single string. So string starts from here then one string ends here plus concatenate. So if you're not using a new line or plus, you can just start from here and close it here. Everything else will actually be inside the single quotation marks. Then we specify the values. Uh, there. So this now actually behaves like a string. Then we use JavaScript objects built-in function json.parse to convert this string into a JavaScript object. To do that, then finally we use again uh, object, a variable, set it to constant so it cannot change. JSON, capital JSON, which basically is an object by default present inside JavaScript, dot parse. So we are using in this method that exists inside this JSON object. That's a default uh, class. Okay. So here we are saying, hey, access this parse dot text method. So what this will do, it will read this text as a string and parse it, or in other words, convert it into a JavaScript object form. Finally, we use the JavaScript object in your page. So now we can use JavaScript object in our page. And so how do we access this element? We say, for example, I have a paragraph tag okay, and I want to change the content based on my objects. So I go inside, I say, hey, document dot get element by ID demo. Go inside my PA document, which is actually HTML document. Get me an element called demo. There would be an element called demo. Read that demo element, change its inner HTML. So this is what this basically line of code does. Again, this is JavaScript. Want to learn more about JavaScript? Check out my channel. I have a complete video 
on JavaScript uh, that on a, almost in one hour covered the entire basics. You can find more about what we are talking about in this line. Then the actual object reference is done here. So we access the object dot employee and then we provide the index number. Okay. So what we now doing is that we saying, hey, I have an object, which is this one. Dot employee means that it contains an employee array. Dot one basically means that I'm accessing the first index element. Dot first name means I want to access the first name. So what we're doing is we're accessing the name or the key attribute based on the index number. Okay. And then we say plus object name dot employee one again the same value so that the, for the first record or the, the data that's on the first index access dot last name access its last name value so whatever data is there based on the key and value information we can access it let's see this code in action so now you can see this is an entire code we write a simple html code create objects from json string uh, so same thing here again we have a javascript tag we created a paragraph tag with an id demo so we first created the string the string is created um, again as i said we are using single quotations here sometimes if you don't want to use a single quotation for easier sake you can remove these single quotations and you can start from one single quotation here ending here and remove all these plus 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 but because we are just right this will behave as a string one plus string two plus string three plus string four okay and each string contains this thing so starting from a curly brackets we write in employees colon bracket star bracket close with for an array and then provide data inside it now to access this data this is what we do we say hey first let me convert this string into a javascript object form so we pass this string uh, and save it as an object notation then we say go inside this object find me an employee at index one so as we know, every array index starts with a zero. So the first element is saved on a zero index. The next element is saved on index one. And then the subsequent index follows. So the first index means actually this one, right? It's because all array index starts at a zero index. So this is at a zero index. So we now access that, hey, inside this object, there's an employee object. Find the object at one index, and get me its first name. Go inside the object, find me an employee's object at again same one index and find me its dot last name. So that's why we need first name and last names to be or this key values to be same for all our objects. So it becomes much easier and we get Anna Smith. So if you want to access the object at the zero index, basically you would write zero here. Now this means that we are trying to access the element at the first index, which is actually John Doe. Okay. Similarly, if you just mix it up, for example, if I just use one and run the code, now we get John Smith. Why? Because at the zero index, the first name is John, this one. This is the zero index, first element in the array. Then we say employees one index. So that means they now go inside this one index element and get me the last name. So in this one employee index, employee name is Smith. So it's returning John Smith. So this is how basically we process and read the data. Okay, make sense? So this is all about JSON. That's it. That's all JSON is. So it saves data in a string form, and then we can parse it using our standard JavaScript code and traverse through each element. So we can use all JavaScript standard functions to loop through the elements or traverse each element and print whatever data we want. That's all JSON for you. If you want to learn JSON as a complete tutorial? I have already made one. So don't forget to check out the channel. Hit the subscribe button and like. I am going into all of these basic concepts uh, using JSON for all these things. So all these topics are covered in my detailed, complete JSON video, okay. hopefully on the channel already. So don't forget to subscribe and check it out. This is Dr. Zishan signing off.